Have you heard about N-clomiphene? N-clomiphene, what is N-clomiphene? Who's using it? Why are they using it? Some people are reporting on social media this is a game changer and this is everything they ever wanted. And to be honest, I've never personally used N-clomiphene. It was initially developed for women trying to increase their fertility, basically enhance ovulation. Clomiphene myself, I have trialed clomiphene. So let's do a breakdown quickly to find out what and clomiphene is and is this right for you? So for many that know or don't know, there are different ways to improve your testosterone levels. One, you take exogenous testosterone. Uh, that'd be a testosterone by injection, a testosterone via a cream, testosterone via gels, testosterone via tablet like testosterone decanoate which is a slow release to boost exogenously from outside your body to make your inside your body have higher testosterone levels because you're taking something and it's, it's increasing but what if there's a way to take a tablet a medication a pill that would allow your own body to ramp up the production of its own testosterone now we've had such a drug for years it's called Clomid, Clomid. This, th we've known about this probably from the 60s. It's one of the first selective estrogen receptor modulators. It was initially developed for women trying to increase their fertility, basically enhance ovulation. How do they enhance ovulation? You increase the LH and the FSH, gonadotropins from the brain. Men also have LH and FSH, gonadotropins from the brain. And these, rather than stimulating ovulation, they stimulate the testes to make testosterone and sperm, what you need for reproduction, for fertility. Now, the issue is when you take exogenous testosterone from all various sources, then that exogenous testosterone has a feedback mechanism. It, it converts, it aromatizes into estradiol. It is reduced into dihydrotestosterone. The estradiol bit is sensed by the brain and slows its release of LH and FSH. And then the cycle stops because the body says, I've got enough estradiol, which means I've got enough LH, enough FSH, and enough testosterone. One way to overcome that is to fool the brain into thinking, hey, we can keep producing LH, FSH, and testosterone because we don't sense any estradiol at all in the brain. Therefore, we're going to be happy and make lots of testosterone, in, in fact, quite high. The problem with traditional clomid, or clomid, or clomiphene, is that it was part N-clomiphene already in it, and part zooclomiphene. So you've got, you got a, a molecule that's got two halves, two sides to it. And this is very common with many other molecules out there. And sometimes one of the sides is more bioactive than the other, and one side might have more side effects than the other. And the same is the case with uh, clomiphene versus N-clomiphene. So when one takes the commercially licensed and, and marketing authorized medication, clomiphene citrate, they're getting N-clomiphene already, but they're also getting uh, zooclomiphene. So they're getting both. What if you can peel away the part that doesn't have benefits that you want as a man and only have the part that does. Well, that's what compounding or specials do. And that's what was tried back in 2015. Pharmaceutical companies are always looking for ways to squeeze more juice out of the orange, essentially. They want, they want uh, to get more squeeze. And the one way to get more squeeze is to take an existing molecule look at both sides and say, oh, that side's more bioavailable. We're going to now just take this put a new patent on it and then take it to market. Is that right? I'm, I'm not sure. It's just what, what they do. But essentially, that's all. People are already taking this. So what you got to realize, realize is FDA, MHRA, EMA have already approved clomiphene, clomid for increasing ovulation. And then it gets used off-label for men who are trying to increase their own ovulation of, of sperm and, and testosterone, not ovulation, but they're, they're trying to produce, increase their own levels. 
They're already taking this. It's already being prescribed. We've got years of data on this from the, the late 60s onwards. We know that works. But if we can remove that bit that causes a side effect, that is a real winner. So anyway, uh, Androxel in the USA, or Repros uh, Pharmaceuticals through Androxel try to get this approved by the FDA back in 2015. They took, they had certain studies. They brought men through. They unfortunately took obese men, same in the e, in the EU. They took similar patients, and they said, "Look at this molecule. If only we can have men maintain their fertility, it boosts their testosterone. It's going to be a win-win." And in fact, in the studies, they actually did do that. They maintained fertility, especially when compared to testo gel. They increased testosterone levels especially higher when they compared it to testo gel and men were doing this under their own steam under their own accord well with a bit of help from this particular molecule and clomiphene and they tested in i think different sizes 6.25 12.5 and 25 milligram doses i think the 12.5 milligram dose they go to uh, to get approved they, they complete phase one phase two, well they complete the preclinical trials to see what the pharmacokinetics of the drugs are it, it shows how long it lost you know i think it lost about a day um and then it has continued effects of increasing lh and fsh which increased testosterone they looked at safety data uh, they looked at if it interacts with other medications, had very low interaction with other medications. So they, then they moved to phase one. They trial it in healthy individuals. They measure how high the testosterone levels go. They look for any side effects. They don't see that. They move it to phase two. In phase two, they recruit certain patients in the study. And these guys thought they're going to be clever. They said, oh, we're going to find a way that this can be used for diabetes. Now, one of the things I've always said is that endocrinologists should be demoted from endocrinologists to mediocre diabetes specialists because many times endocrinologists don't look at the benefits of testosterone for diabetes. But it's well known in literature that testosterone does help patients who are diabetic. And so this company, or these two companies that, that pushed testosterone for approval, had, had looked at to see how if you improve testosterone, you could improve the situation for diabetics, at least partially, which is why they, that's why they recruited obese older men who had low testosterone. So they're trying to get as many hits with one trial as they could. So they should have done wonders and they should have been should have been approved. But when it came time, especially in Europe, to get the approval, there are about uh, I think five men out of 588 who had experienced some um, potential cardiovascular uh, effects. Right? So you basically some pa some patients, even on Clomid, male and female, even women on estradiol will get some sort of thromboembolytic, thromboembolytic type of event. So it could be blood clots uh, leading to DVT, or sometimes it could be pulmonary embolism. Very rare. It can also happen if you travel by air and, and your high altitude. It can happen if you had a pre-existing family history for blood clotting disorders. So this happens. And it so happens that it can also happen if you're obese. So think about this. You've got 588 obese patients enrolled in this study. Five of them have a thrombolytic event. And the regulators get a little bit nervous. But when they peeled back and when the company peeled back and said, look, this first patient, they had a genetic predisposition to clotting these this other patient had surgery like hip surgery which is very well known to do this this other patient had atrial fibrillation which can throw clots and these other few patients had been traveling overseas a few days earlier before they experienced the event so all those could be explained but the way clinical trials work you you have to write it down in the study so looking at the whole so that was the first part of it and the second part of the the second part of the story is the benefit showed that you increase testosterone but the regulators changed their mind what they would consider efficacious and they wanted to see essentially a uh, functional outcome and that was you know do you have increased grip strength do you have increased walking distance do you have increased uh, or decreased lipids do you have improved libido do you have increased energy very hard to sometimes to measure when if you're testing a testosterone product and we've seen others uh for instance i think the uh um, there's a testosterone enanthate that comes subcutaneous. They just simply looked at blood levels. But for, in this particular time, at this particular location, the, the testing 
or the outcome was about, it wasn't just good enough to raise testosterone it, uh, above and beyond in a uh, statistically significant way. And so the, the small committee in the regulator for the EMA, in their wisdom, which to me wasn't very wise, uh, decided not to grant their marketing authorization. Fortunately, fortunately, around the world, and same thing with the FDA, the FDA had similar reasons. The FDA was a bit more down to the way they uh, submitted their application and the way uh, that they also identified the endpoints or didn't identify the endpoints. FDA wanted more information and the company wasn't able to supply it and they ran out of funds. So it's quite, quite an unfortunate story on both ends. You've got either a slightly overzealous EU regulator that doesn't understand that one of the benefits of raising testosterone improves symptoms, but because it wasn't again spelled out in the study like the like the regulators wanted, then it did not get their approval either. But it doesn't mean the molecule is not safe. And in fact, that was highly that was demonstrated in, in in the studies. So going back to it, so where where does it stand legally or illegally? Because you'll see on TikTok and other locations uh, online that people are talking about enclomiphene, trialing enclomiphene. Some have it as research molecules, and you know there is a huge risk. Firstly, for those who are using research molecules of enclomiphene, because one, there is no safety net. You, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know if you're getting a GMP safe, free of. Uh, toxic metals, heavy metals, or whatever else goes into making these molecules, you can't be reassured, especially if on the label it says n for not for human use, for research purposes only, you're really taking a massive risk. Now, compounding pharmacies in the USA have made this available. It has fallen somewhere on a, a particular list that allows pharmacies in the US to compound this um, for a named patient basis. And that's how it works in the UK and the EU. If there are certain uh, medications that are available, then uh, doctors can prescribe these if there is a, a clear clinical need. And I would argue that the n clomiphene has a higher safety profile than clomiphene. There's less risk of pro-estrogenic effects from n clomiphene than from clomiphene and especially when it's used in the right patient context. So one of the, uh, the British Society of Sexual Medicine claims that when you, it, does, it says it right in the guidelines, in fact, when you, a patient needs to have fertility maintained or saved, uh, doctors can look at uh, clomid or clomiphene. But we know clomiphid, clomid, uh, but we know clomid or clomiphene agonizes the estrogen, estrogen receptor, it raises the SHBG, it gives you less free testosterone, it has other side effects that men don't deal with really well, and if only we can remove those bits, we would have a really ideal medication, and the medication is already, that, that molecule is already being ingested by patients who use Clomid, we're just removing the, the part that we don't want, and that's the beauty of enclomiphene. So enclomiphene is anti-estrogenic in the brain, it improves testosterone levels, and in many cases with the right patient subset, not obese patients, they can benefit from having their own testosterone levels elevated and get the benefits of testosterone treatment. So is enclomiphene going to be right for everyone? No. There are certain patients that we wouldn't want to use it for, like I mentioned earlier, patients who are more, more obese, it would be contraindicated, I, in my mind, from using that. For patients that uh, this molecule doesn't agree with, if you have an allergy to this, this, this uh, clomid, and if you, you don't get on well with, with clomid, you're probably not going to get on well with n clomiphene either. But there are some subsets of patients where fertility is needed, and, and wanted without shutting down the pituitary axis, uh, this would be a conversation you would have with one of the doctors at, at, uh, at, at BMH or your own clinic in the USA uh, if, if they were to, to offer this. So I think that, um, that the safety overall and the efficacy uh, would outweigh it. Obviously, that's your individual choice uh, if you should decide that this is the way forward. Uh, with enclomiphene. But overall, the the thought behind preserving and maintaining your own pituitary axis is a noble one. It's one that, you know, who doesn't want to have their own body making it? And one of the other benefits is, should you stop taking enclomiphene or clomiphene for that matter? I've always said that your levels, whilst they'll inflate and increase, uh, will slowly float back down to baseline. Whereas when you do, do exogenous testosterone, 
once the testosterone is metabolized, your levels start falling very quickly based on the pharmacokinetics of that injection or the cream or the gel. And at that point, your body doesn't rebound as quickly as you like. So you en enter a period where your blood levels are very low and your pituitary is sluggish and you're not producing high enough levels of testosterone to feel the benefits and the health benefits in particular and the mental health benefits of having optimal testosterone or any testosterone. And it takes a while to get out of that. And, and basically you have to crawl, crawl out of this, this deep dark well where that doesn't happen with uh, you know, boosting your levels with an N-clomiphene or even clomiphene for that matter. And then you just kind of gracefully fall back to baseline and you crack on. So uh, there are pros and cons to each method. I personally still believe exogenous testosterone or exogenous testosterone with HCG and HMG can be real game changers for men uh, who are looking to improve their testosterone exogenously. I think that's probably your more bioidentical option rather than taking essentially a substance that's not made or found in the human body. You're taking it to get the, your own body to make it, but it's not quite the same. But in any case, we feel it's important at BMA to have all options on the table in, and, and offer things in a safe, consistent way. So let me know in the comments if you've either tried in clomiphene, what your thoughts are on the use of actually clomid or clomiphene or n-clomiphene has it been a game changer either or uh, we have some case stories of even clomiphene being used and we have had it on our channel before with dr george about uh certain fertility treatments using clomiphene or n-clomiphene uh, even mesterolone with it to enhance uh fertility but maybe you've had an equally good success with H hcg hmg and testosterone together uh, or maybe you've used clomiphene or n clomiphene as part of a pct a post cycle therapy where you had to come off your exogenous testosterone and now you try to boost your own levels as used for a short term well we can't tell you even in the studies what the long term effects are of you know many 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 years and in in practice most patients will stay on uh, clomiphene or n clomiphene for maybe a year maybe less maybe a couple of years but usually not much longer than that just out of uh, the need to to get the, the get their levels boosted improve their symptoms uh, enhance or maintain their fertility and then something else comes up in life and they change it so overall let us know in the comments what you think if you like content like this and like us doing the deep dives on these different topics do subscribe to the channel even hitting the notification bell it really helps uh, lets the algorithm know that you like the content that's out there and it will serve it up to you don't forget to follow us on spotify on spotify we are doing uh, having our, our content there as well and we have different podcasts and we're also on tiktok and instagram and hope, hopefully you found this video helpful uh, to your health and wellness and well-being. And until next time, I'm Mike.